Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's try our hand at an integral involving inverse hyperbolic functions. In this case, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the area underneath this curve between x equals 0 and x equals 3, and the curve is defined by y equals 1 over the square root of x squared plus 16. Now we understand that if we write it in the general format, the integral of dx over the square root of x squared plus a squared is indeed the inverse hyperbolic sine of x over a. Of course, if it's an indefinite integral, you need the constant of integration, but with limits you do not. So what we're going to do here, well first let's take a look at the function. When x equals 0, y is 1 over the square root of 16, which is 4, 1 quarter would be indeed 0 0.25 for x equals 0. When x is equal to 3, 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 16 is 25, the square root of 25, well that's 5, that's 1 fifth, that means the height of this curve would be 0.2 for x equals 3. So it looks like our curve looks just like it's supposed to. Now we're going to take a small little area element, a small little dA, that has width dx and height equal to y. And of course y is equal to that function right there, so our area element dA is equal to y dx, and so the total area is going to be the integral of all the little da's, and each da is going to be y dx from 0 to 3, x equals 0 to x equals 3, and y is defined as this function, so we're going to replace it by that function. But instead of writing 16, we'll write 4 squared, so it looks more like the general format. So that means that that integral is indeed the hyperbolic or the inverse hyperbolic sign. So this cannot be written as the, um, the result of that is the inverse hyperbolic sine of x over a, a being 4, so it would be x divided by 4, and then evaluate it from 0 to 3. Now, in this format, the inverse hyperbolic sine, you really don't know how to plug those values in. So what you could do instead is say, well, I know what this is equal to. So the general equation of the inverse hyperbolic sine looks like this. So we have the inverse hyperbolic sine of, let's say, u is equal to the natural log of u plus the square root of u squared plus 1. Now, if instead of u we have x over 4, we can then say that the inverse hyperbolic sine of x over 4 is equal to the natural log of u will now become x over 4 plus the square root of, and u squared will be x over 4, quantity squared plus 1. Whoop, and I guess like this, or we could put parentheses around it either way. And so that means that this can now be written as follows. So this is equal to, from here, the natural log of x over 4 plus the square root of x over 4, quantity squared, plus 1 evaluated from 0 to 3. And now all we have to do is plug in those limits and see what we get. So plug in the upper limit, we get the natural log of 3 over 4 plus the square root of 3 over 4 squared, that would be 9 over 16 plus 1. Okay, minus, when we plug in the lower limit, would be the natural log of 0 plus the square root of 0 plus 1, or the square root of 1. So that means we get, here we get the natural log of 1, and the natural log of 1 is 0, so this simply drops off. Simplifying this, this is equal to the natural log of 3 over 4 plus the square root of, well, this can be 16 over 16 plus 9, which is 25 over 16. So the derivative of this, that would be 5 fourths. So we get this is equal to the natural log of 3 over 4 plus 5 over 4, which is 8 over 4. So this becomes equal to the natural log of 2. And that would then be the area underneath that curve from x, x equals 0 to x equals 3. So a nice little example of how to utilize the concept of the inverse hyperbolic functions, in this case the inverse hyperbolic sign, to solve what otherwise would be a difficult integral. And that's how it's done.